Hello filmers and welcome back to Stefan's Bilderwelt. Maybe you have seen the tutorial of Simon Jones where he created a galaxy from some pictures of a small company called NASA. Today I would like to show you how to create a galaxy yourself from the scratch. Okay, if you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel, put your thumbs up and leave a comment. As the tutorial is quite long, we jump right into it. Let's go! So, first things first, we are starting with a new project, 9020 by 1080 with 50 frames per second. Start compositing. Okay, now we are creating a new composite shot. Give it a good name. Starfield, sounds good for me. Duration, 10 seconds. And hit enter. Inside this comp, we are creating a new plane, a white one. And now we are looking in the effects folder for the atomic particle and just drag it, on, drag it onto this layer. We are changing some values here. In the fractal section, we are changing the displacement and disperse around 700. In the particle placement, I will go down to around 150 and 200 on the X and Y and on the Z, I will go up to three. You can play around with the size, size randomness as well. So I'm going for three. The speed will be at zero and the size strength at one. But I think I go down with the size randomness again to zero and just increase the size a little bit. Okay. So that's good. Inside the effect folder, we are looking for the glow effect. Just can close this up a little bit, get some space. Here's the glow. Open it up. The threshold all down to zero, intensity a little bit up, the radius a little bit up. And we have to change the blend mode as well to add. And with the radius, I can play around with the blur of the stars. The next thing is go to options, export frame, give it a good name. I just replace this one. So star field one. And now I'm just changing the values again. Change the glow with its intensity and changing the number of particles. I can move around this little dock in the middle of the star field to put it onto another place, play around with the set value as well. Just try different things. There's nothing wrong or right. Also play with the size. The goal is to have a few different layers of stars. At the end, in my case, I will come up with five different layers and all the time changing the values, go to option and export the frame give it a good name. In this case, it's Starfield 2. I replace it again and do the very same thing for the next few Starfields, just playing around with the values. Okay, I'm done with the last one. I delete the glow effect inside the search. Go to media, create a new composite shot. And in this case, I call it Starfield Comp. The rest we can leave as it is. And now you have to find the exported frames. Take them all inside. Again, take them all and put them down into your comp. Change them to a 3D plane. And now I'm going to change the blend mode of each of them inside the properties or I can just right click here, go to screen, go to screen and I think you can mark them all. We try this later and just do it once, change them all in one. But I have to try this so I just do it here with a right click, that's fast as well. Okay, we take the first one, go to its transform values and change the position. So I can change the set value now and 
bring it a little bit in to the front. The same with Starfield 2. This one I will put a little bit more to the back. So it's all up to you how you would like to place the star fields. So I repeat this with all five layers. Also I can put in some values inside here. So we take this to minus 900. We change the scale. And also, as you see, it's looking a little bit strange inside the middle. So I just put this layer a little bit over to the left and change its opacity. Same thing with the next one. Transform back and set. Let's go for 800. And the last one, transform We bring this all the way back and move it a little bit upwards and change the opacity as well. Okay, this looks fine as well. I just turn off this cross. We go back to Starfield 1 and there we see as well it's too strange inside the middle or in the center. So I change its opacity and also the position. Just that I can get rid of those uh, lines around the frames itself. So I do repeat this with all four layers until I'm happy with the look of my star fields. So there are no lines around the frames. So if I take my camera now, I can move around with the camera, just changing the set value. And here I have a nice 3D star field. Okay, now I would like to give it some color. So I'm looking for the color vibrance effect and put it into a new grade layer. Change the color to something colder here. Reduce the vibrance. So again, just make it to your taste. Try the different sliders and the different numbers. I'm putting on another glow effect on top of it and change the values here. Just until I have something which I like. Okay, looks quite nice. I'm looking for another effect now. Uh, yeah, just delete this one. And I'm looking for the auto light flares. Put them right onto the layer. And again, change the values. I'm going for the digital blocks and change its intensity. Just again, play around with the values. You have to like it at the end. And now we only have one flare up there at the top. So I will change it. Maximum flares. I will go up to four. Again, play around with the values. The most important tip I can give you, save your project. I keep forgetting it, so sometimes I lose all my work. So save it. So next we are creating the Nebula, creating a new composite shot. Give it a good name again. We leave the duration, but we change the height to 1920. So we have a square. And we are looking for another effect, in this case, the clouds. So we can't just drag them onto it. So we need a new plane, a black one. Call it Nebula 1. And now we can drag the clouds down onto this plane. We are changing some values here as well. So open up its controls. So I will change the center here, but again, just change it as you like it. I will change the seed as well. And now I'm drawing a mask with the Bessier tool. Try to keep inside this black area. So not the white ones, 
just the darker areas. And clicking around here to create a kind of a single cloud. Close it up, come to its properties. Inside the shape, I will change the feather strength and bring it up. Inside the clouds layer, I will change the properties speed x value to 20.2. So I have a little movement inside the clouds. Okay, I'm coming back to the mask and just clicking onto the line will put some additional points onto the line. No, oh, missed the line. So just click the mask again and put some more points inside. Okay, that should do. I open up the transform properties of the mask and we are going to animate the pass. So at the first frame, I put in a keyframe and jump back to the very last frame and just change the position of the points, bring them in and out. So at the end, it's not the cloud which is moving, it's actually the pass. And always try to go into the darker areas if possible. And as you can see, the mask is moving. Okay, let's come back to the effects and we are looking for the levels. So the levels histogram, put it onto this layer, open it up and we bring the middle value more to the right. So we can just make some space here. So the middle slider, just pull it to the right. So it will get all over a little bit darker. The blending mode of the cloud I will put to screen. Okay, next thing is we create a duplicate of this layer. Coming back to the first one, I just change its scale and the rotation. So the goal is to create different layers of clouds and stack them all together. So we have a big cloud at the end. So it's almost the same as we did with the star fields. I have to take the arrow here. I still had the mask on. And then I change the values, change the feather, rotate the cloud, change its size and yeah, try to have different layers of cloud. And as well, I can change the mask here. So it's animation just by dragging the points. And as you can see, as I scale down this layer, there's the sharp edge. So I have to bring the mask more inside. So as you see, I have created some more clouds and I'm changing the values now. For example, in the appearance, I can change the offset. I can change the position. So to have different clouds as well. So it doesn't look all like the same. Yeah, so play around with the values, find the best look for yourself. Okay, I have now six layers. I changed the cloud brightness of some of them as well to make them a little bit more white. And now the next thing would be that we export this one and we will export it as an, in my case, QuickTime ProRes 422 and of course without the audio. Yeah, give it a good name so you are able to find it again. HitFilm is keeping to jump in different folders when you open up the export panel even if you had it already in the right one before. So that's hopefully something they change as well. And as you can see, my Mac is not the newest one, so it will take a time now, but I'll be right back. So here we are back in the Starfield comp 
And now we have to import the movie we just exported. So I have to find it again. So which one was it? Give it a good name. Yeah, there it is, Nebula 1. So and I drag this down onto the Starfield com, open its properties and change the blend mode to screen. And here we are, almost finished. Looks nice. And there's our movement of the cloud as well. Again, I'm going up to the effects panel and I'm looking for the vibrance, color vibrance and just put it onto the layer. And yeah, again, play around. I think I will go for something or maybe darker. Yeah, that's looking good. So I can change the vibrance here. I can play around with the face, with the luminance and so on. Next, I put the lens dirt filter into this layer and change its properties just as you like it. So, and now the next thing would be, and I will not show this because now you know already how to do, I will duplicate this layer again and change its properties, of course, with different colors, sizes, put a mask onto it so that you won't see the edges and push it back in C space as well. So you have different cloud layers moving around your nice space. And of course, if you want to move around in 3D, then you have to change it to a 3D layer. And we take the camera here. And as you can see, we can fly through this space scene. And then we can, of course, animate the whole thing. So putting a keyframe at the very first place and maybe we can change the rotation there as well. Yeah, but therefore we have to fly a li little bit inside our picture. So going straight to the end, a bit too far, that will do. So moving inside in set space and then afterwards animate the rotation as well. Here you have it and as I said, duplicate the layer of cloud, change with its properties, change the color, whatever you like. And at the end, you should come up with something like this. Oh, <laughs>